What? What? <laughs> what? I see no point to it. <laughs> what? <gasps> Hello everybody, hope you are well. Welcome to my temporary kitchen. This is kitchen gadget testing number 53, I think. Wish.com special number three. I think. <laughs> Anyhow, hope you are well. If you did not know, this is our temporary kitchen, whilst the other one is being manufactured. Uh, life is life is okay. Uh, we're dealing with the quarantine, and if you want something to fulfill the time, of course, have a marathon at the end of this video and watch the other 52 uh, other gadget videos, if you wish. Speaking of Wish, all of the gadgets today, uh, like the other Wish specials, are from Wish.com, which are down there. I rummaged through the gadget box yesterday, over a hundred more still to get through, and I've got enough to do quite a few Wish videos. They kind of arrive, and then I just put them there, and they all fall around in the box, and um, yes, they take about 30 days to arrive, <laughs> but they're about a pound each. They're not very expensive at all, but sometimes the quality can be hampered by that. But anyhow, uh, just remember that before commenting down below, any of these gadgets sometimes, not normally the Wish ones, can help people with disabilities. You get lots of messages about that saying how it's helped people get in the kitchen or fulfill certain tasks. But today, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so we're actually going to make a wish pie today. Uh, the first thing we've got here are something called pastry stamps. Do you see that? Yes, they are actually a way of crimp, yo, let's crimp our rad, crimp our pastry into different designs. Perfect for pies, pastry, fondant, and quiche. But what you've got is these brackets. They're actually quite clumpy. They feel quite strong, to be fair. Normally, they're very bendy and weak Wish products in general. Simply fold the crust under, press your desired pattern around the edge, and as you move around the pie, line the back edge of the pastry stamp with the indent line from the last impression. To be honest, you don't normally get that, as you'll see um, with any Wish.com items. You tend to just literally get a bag. This actually looks pretty good. It, it definitely came from Wish, so... um. Let's make a pie. Okay, so just like the superhero movie, I've got some uh, ready-made short crust pastry here that I'm letting thaw. Now, the only pie dish I've got um, has already got indents in it, so I'm a little bit worried if this is gonna work. So will we really get to see that, is that the petal, the leaf, or the curly-whirly spirally thing? You see these differences? Pretty cool. But I know I could probably get away with just doing the base bit, like this, and just push that in. And that's just gonna help me to make the full edge, the full landing surface, if you will. Just got to give it a little bit of a haircut, which is basically something I'm mulling over doing whilst we're in this whole isolation thing. I might get the kids to just buzz my hair. Right, so just press that in together. Haha, <laughs> right, the pie base is ready. It needs a filling. This is gonna be quite the pie. Uh, we're gonna just drain off some fruit. Basically what tins we have in the house. So this is some summer fruits in syrup. These are some gooseberries. Again in syrup, look at that. And last but not least, this actually is some apple pie filling which won't drain off uh, because it's quite thick anyway. But we want all of those to mix together and be our filling anyway. I just said anyway twice. So we can give this a gentle stir around together so that we don't disturb it too much. So we'll just put that to one side. Now the juicy bit, we're gonna try and thicken this up and add it in with it as well. So we're gonna sprinkle in two good old spoonfuls of corn flour, which is just a horrible thing on its own. It looks little icebergs like that. It's already got enough sugar in it, but I'm gonna add some nutmeg, and then I'm just gonna whisk it through. I whisk that like an absolute madman because you get so many lumps with corn flour. I've gotta let this settle. If there's still some lumps there, I'll whisk again. See you in a minute. All right, probably not gonna need all of this, and normally I would make a slurry where you just add a little bit of corn flour with the water and then add it to the bigger mix, but this should bake through. Possibly the pinkest food I've ever made. <laughs> Looks like a milkshake. All right, yeah, so we can push in our filling. Yes, we, need <laughs> we needed way more than that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is all gonna work still, it doesn't matter. Smells blooming gorgeous though, to be fair. We'll add a bit of that juice in there. <laughs> That's gonna bake into it. That's gonna be awesome. Pastry will hold it in place like a dam. It's gonna get all bubbly and caramelized and gorgeous in there. So, the lid. Oh, just draping that over. Ah, oh, yes. I think we've done it. That's all right. Right, let's cut the edges again, give it a little haircut. Very nice. 
Now, I'm just gonna seal Bahia. So many of you don't get that reference, it makes you feel so old, but the ones that do, love it. Yes, I am gonna seal it in Bahia. Um, of course, you can normally just use a fork and that's fine. Uh, you can sometimes egg wash it, but there is a gadget for that. Oh yes, there is in a minute. Now, it is time to crimp that pie. <laughs> Wash these off camera just a moment ago. Uh, so let's just see, this is the indentation we're going for. Let's put it in. <gasps> yes! That's amazing! Because it's sealing it by uh, as well at the same time. We're gonna mix it up. We're gonna go crazy. Please work. Oh, that's worked as well, but a little bit less of an indent. Oh, and then the spirals. Oh, to be honest, I've got a bit more play in that. <clears throat> oh, I need to do that. Look, that's much better. I can go right in with that. Just line it up. Let's see if we can redo it. <clears throat> oh, yes, <laughs> look at the pie. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to work my way around it. Look at that. Actually pretty fun. I'm actually really happy with that. The spirally one was the best one for sure. Pricked it with a fork so that a little bit more steam will come out, but we need more gadgets for this. Yes, we've got this thing. Um, actually no English whatsoever on it, but I seem to remember it being something to do with an egg wash. <laughs> oh look, it looks like a little cartoon character. I could draw a face on it. There we go, look. It's Mr. Brushhead. <laughs> I've just doubled its value. I love finding my way around this kitchen. We're doing all like crazy angles. I'm literally on my knees right now. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this in there. Come on. Oh, go in, go in, go in. <laughs> it's stuck on his head. Go in, go in. There you go. <laughs> okay. He's got little yolk tears. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get the lid on. Right, that, that, is, that is in there. <laughs> 50p. There we go, had a little bit of a clean up. And if I should be able to make the egg wash by beating it together inside him. Look, he's having a good time. We've beaten the egg together. <laughs> it's worked. Yes, Mr. Brushhead, you're an egg wash now. <laughs> right, so let's do it. We get our egg wash. I don't know how quickly this is going to come out. If I just leave it like that, will it fall through? No, it won't. That's pretty good. You got a bit of control, but I'm going to give it a push. And there is egg coming out. Look at that. Ah, oh, wow. It's just the egg white at the moment. It would have been better if it was more beaten. There we go, we want some yolk in here. And we don't really need too much, to be honest. Uh, there we go, we're getting some yolkage, brilliant. That's gonna give it a little bit more color, but the meringue, then if you guys saw some of the Easter biscuits on the live stream I did recently, that will give it a nice sweetness as well, a nice little crust. But that is actually working. It's glossing it. It's actually quite fun, I can't stop doing it. And of course, like I said a moment ago, you could seal it by IAR when you wanted to put the lid on the top of the pastry earlier. That's pretty cool. Just getting my temporary oven in my temporary kitchen preheated for the time being because we've got one last thing to sprinkle on top. Sugar, but oh no, there's a wish gadget for that. It's basically a, a spoon. When I did my first Wish.com gadget review, this skull spoon was ordered, but it actually took three months to arrive. I see no point to it. Um, other than it's a, it's a spoon with a, with a skull in it. I mean, will it even hold sugar? I'll wash it and I'll let you know. Okay, spoon going in. Let's try and get it like this, see if you can see it. Oh, <laughs> look, it's left it like it's got a little haircut. Can you see that? <laughs> You've gone grey, mate. Look at that. <laughs> That's actually quite cool because you've still got the, um, the sugar there. Let me try this. Oh my gosh, it feels like one of those like fairground games. I can sprinkle it through its iron nose. Ah, oh, onto my pie. I mean, it's fairly novelty, isn't it? Can't really see the Queen of England having one of these over a cup of tea with the corgis. Hey, check out my skull spoon. But it's working. You can sort of shimmy it through the holes. It gives you a little bit of control. I quite like it. It doesn't feel like a weak build of quality either. Actually really, <laughs> really like that. Amazing. And that was 50p. All right, Boston and Amy are keeping an eye on the pie uh, as I try and add it into our oven one-handed. Ah, this thing is deceptively fast at cooking things, so it might only take about 20-25 minutes. Oh, need to push it in a bit more. Come on, in you go. Yes! Oh, the wish pie is on its way. 
Oh, house update since the last video. We've um, got plasterboard uh, in the corner of the wall there. Um, that's, that's it. Right, I'm not using Mr. Bean as a bouncer to protect the oven. I'm kind of trying to use him as a little bit of a light blocker to block up that window with that light coming in. Ah! I could go get the other cardboard cutouts. It'll look like a scene from Home Alone. Ah, uh, yeah, that really didn't do that much. <laughs> They're having a good time though. Um, whilst that's in the oven baking away, we have got two gadgets that kind of go uh, together a little bit. This first one is probably quite self-explanatory and I did shave a bit of money by getting it from Wish. Uh, it did take three and a half weeks to get here. It is an unbranded vegetable, fruit, whatever you want peeler that looks like a razor, but it basically it's got a blade on it for that. And that's quite dangerous because it's literally just been sent with a little bit of film on it. Normally you'd have like a plastic cap on it. A little bit like the ones in my veggie prep kit and thanks for everyone that backed the Kickstarter campaign because you do not want to cut your fingers on this. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> we can shave, we'll probably shave a carrot and a potato. There we go. This next one, I'm not gonna chuck it in the air because I wish I knew it was like this when I first opened the bag. I was like, what the heck is that? Um, it came like this, this is a, like a crinkle cut knife. There's no protection on it whatsoever. This was two pounds and it's got like the groove blades there so you can get like funky shapes out of your chips and we'll do it with the carrots and the potato but the, the blade is so like cheap and it feels so light. I don't know how that got through the post without, there's no protection on it at all. There, there's nothing. So I'm gonna give both of these a wash. This one feels light like it should but this feels, this is lighter than that. Uh, the blade, it's not very sharp at all. And look, can you see this? Look. <laughs> okay, so we're nice and washed. I thought this knife was gonna fall apart when I was washing it. It's just so delicate. Let's, let's shave the carrot. Ready? What? What? Oh, there we go. It's, it's going. Does it have to be done vertically? What? What? So I'll try it. I'm left-handed. So oh. That's not doing anything. Oh, you have to put like quite a bit of pressure on. There we go. Mm, not sure if I like that. God, I really got to press down hard. It is working, but you kind of, you know, like when you're doing the shave, you do it. You want that satisfaction that you're just getting that lovely, you know, not quattro blade style, but enough to get a carrot peeled. God, that feels dangerous. Like it could slide off. I mean, it's working. But when you're holding a carrot like that, I mean, just one slip there and you're gonna nick your fingers. That's, seriously, that's gonna hurt. Uh, of course, the uh, Barry Lewis uh, peeler. Nice. Oh, that sounds sharp as well, doesn't it? Sorry, not to promote my own thing, but listen. Sharp. <laughs> it's nothing, it's nothing, it's gone. Other peelers are available, of course, but look at that, this potato. Ugh. Oh, it, you have to really press down. Uh, anyhow, right, let's quickly bring the knife back in. Of course, we built the knife up so much, we weren't worried about the shaver, but that wasn't very good at all. Let's try this. S -s -s nothing in there. I mean, yeah, you're getting grooved carrots. Of course, you can't saw on it because it's just a downward motion, but you know, if you want to make little carrots like, like the letter W, yeah, I mean, it definitely feels good, but like, it's something that I feel like it's not got much, you've probably got about four or five uses out of it. Let's try some crinkle cut chips. Oh my gosh. That is not going through, come on. Oh. Oh, <coughs> oh wow. Look at the ridges on it though. You could make some really good crisps out of that, but uh, no, that's, that's actually really dangerous because I'm putting so much pressure on it. My thumb is starting to slip under there. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. I can't find my rolling pin, so I'm just using a spare chopping board. If, if you have like a, a spare uh, whacking device. <laughs> it kind of works. I don't know, this, this feels really unsafe. Really, that's going straight in my bin. Let's be honest, these were both pretty bad. All right, we've got two more things to go. We might better slip one more in before we get the pie out to cool down. And this, uh, tweezer seed, <laughs> love it. Oh, it's so sharp, it's opened the bag there already. Look, you see, I've got two in a pack. They, oh my gosh, 
that feels that feels like tin foil. It feels like you know, like kids' toys with like when you have metal sort of like play saucepans when it's not actually you could never use it on your hob. It would just go. Meh. That's what this is made out of. But what do you think these are for? Hmm. Have a little look. You see, these are tweezers for that. Yes. Removing the uh, dots, the eyes, the seeds from a pineapple around the outer edge. There is an amazing gadget for that anyway, where you even bypass that, where you get the lid off. I've got it in my garage, but you screw it down, pop it out, takes the core out with it. But no, if you want that authentic pineapple look with the grooves on the side, you would keep them in anyway. If anyone's got any ideas what you can do with pineapple skin, I've never really thought of that before, but um, one thing you could do is get a kid to close their eyes, pretend that you've got a pet alligator for the day. Look, you can actually see the one I bought on the right there. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Look how neat that looks. You sort of pluck it all in and tweezer it out. But look, there's another one here where it cuts like, almost like rows of the grooves out in one. They, those pineapples just look way pretty. It's just so light and flimsy, but it is sharp on that point. When I was washing it a minute ago, I did spot that. So this might be a bit tricky to show you. Let's try and go to this angle here. Okay, let's go in, twist and pull out. <gasps> It's made a little Christmas tree of pineapple eyes. So you go wide and it actually twist, pull out. That's really cool. You just push this in as well, how it's designed. I'm not even pushing it, it closes the gap for you. So if I like go like this, ready, in, and that's, look, that's bit it. And I twist and pull that out. <laughs> the most perfect shape. That's amazing. If this is something that you eat regularly, a pineapple, and you like having it like this and taking the eyes out and getting every little nook and cranny of it. Because let's face it, when you turn it into circles, you're probably missing some of the little bits. I'm gonna just see if I can do four in a row. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like speed pineappling. <gasps> Time to perfection. My pie is probably burnt. It is kind of nearly burnt, but there's a little patch in the middle that I just, if I can brown that, it look rather good. The crust is kind of gone. There might be a bit of pattern left. I'm gonna just do a bit more pineappling. That's what we're calling it, we're pineappling. What do you do during the lockdown? Did you watch lots of Netflix and stuff? No, it's pineappling. This is like my new hobby. This is brilliant. So despite the core being in the middle of pineapple, we've potentially now got a pineapple that we could eat like an apple. Oh. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> oh, wow, what a pie. <laughs> you can see some of it's, oh, it's sort of caramelized and congealed together. You can see the ribbony bits, still quite hot. Let it cool down. And I think, to be honest, that has actually done quite good. You'd probably keep one pattern. The spirally one is all right. Yeah, you can still see it though. The footprints, not sure what happened there but it's, it's okay. This last one, whilst we wait for the pie to cool down, is it's gonna be possibly smoky in here. When we use our hob, which I need to do, it gets smoky, it gets hot, it gets smelly. Uh, it's, 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 it's great. But that doesn't matter because we have got, oh my gosh, this is how flimsy the packaging is. I might as well just rip it off. This is the egg spatula, which is designed, can you see up there, to protect the yolk. Grab, flip. Double spatula with a flipper in one. Remember Flipper? That was a great TV show. This is basically what it is. Wow. <gasps> These grooves. I don't, I've never really experienced this before. Every silicon uh, implement I've had in the kitchen and device has been rounded, but that actually feels painful. So we'll cook up some bacon and then grab it, clamp it, flip it. That could be quite cool. Don't tend to have that problem with bacon so much, but then I was thinking sausages. These are some Guinness sausages. Saw them in a the supermarket. They were the only ones left. Thought we'd try those because they roll around quite a bit too, don't they? So pan on. It could get smoky. Let's see what happens. It's gonna get noisy. Yes, this is the hob um, that we were left with when we moved here. Even that has <laughs> broke a few times. I had to get the camping stove out. I might actually do a camping gadget special soon, by the way. I've got quite a few outdoor ones. I'm just gonna add a smidgen of oil. You only want to really lightly oil it, so just a little bit on there. Fried egg. Like, I've never really had this before. Like, why would you wanna protect the yolk? I mean, stop it from bursting when it's frying. I mean, this is something I always do with a fried egg anyway. I like to put a little bit of pepper in. I've just got to do it. 
But I mean, the, the bottom of it, you know, it's not a bad little spatula. That's that's moving it around. I'm loosening it up. Look, here we go. Look, because it's the, the yolk's gone to one side, I can't get it that side because I'm not going to get enough coverage on that lip. So I need to go like this, clamp it down. <laughs> Look, I can walk around with my egg. Hello, let's go to the shops. And just for, you know, for the sake of it. Oh, actually, you can see the difference. No, get it under and you're fine. I don't know. Look, you can go like that and try and turn it and stuff like that, but they, they, you can just push them around anyway. So I don't think sausages are gonna work. But what about bacon? With a normal spatula, you get in like that, turn it. Not bad, not bad. I'm awfully sorry about the noise. But then with this one, you can get in, clamp it down. Ah. That's actually pretty good. The edges aren't too bad. Oh, a wish.com pie. I think I left half of the filling <laughs> in there. It's still warm, so it's maneuverable a bit. Once it chills and sets, it'll firm up lovely. Mmm. But when it's warm, oh, that is naughty. <laughs> Alrighty then folks, I think that is us done for kitchen gadget testing number 53, which is going to be 54 now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Have a barathon, put on your sweatband and check out the rest of the videos here on the channel. Over 1500, including an epic kitchen gadget testing playlist, so check that out if you want. There's also a 16 hour long one, which a lot of you guys are enjoying at the moment during this isolation period. So whatever, let's just have a little summary of which ones I like and don't like. Don't like? Not so bad. I think if you want portion control and you like skulls, this is all right. I think this one is um, is useful. It just needs to be a little bit more rounded here and maybe a little bit more solid. There's probably a more expensive version of this. I will look for it. This was amazing. These worked and this for a quid, if I ate enough pineapple, blew my mind. So I hope this has been useful. See you soon. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, it's still hot. Look at the steam coming off it. I've got some taste testers. The Lewis family have returned to eat the pie. Mm, very nice. Tastes good? It's yeah. a good pie. Is it a good pie? Mm -hmm. Good pie. Good pie. Good pie. <laughs>